um, happy summer to everyone. And high school seniors, I hope that you are already working on your college application essays. That would be a very good idea right now. By the way, if things look different on our screens, for those of you who are watching us on the video, we switched over to Teams and I am not tech savvy at all and I am still figuring it out. But what you are looking at right now is Jennifer Wilcox, who is a college finance consultant here at College Coach. Um, and she'll be talking to us about when colleges meet financial need and a look into the colleges that do this. So um, I'm going to start talking to Jennifer in a second. But first, stick around after this first segment with Jennifer, because I'll be talking with Katie Hager, an admission officer from Boston College and two current Boston College student tour guides about visiting colleges during the summer during the last two segments. So, all right. But first, let's get started with Jennifer. I think, Jennifer, this is a topic that a lot of people um care a lot about you know <laughs> so i agree with um, you we hear it often on our calls yeah and it's interesting too because i i mean i went to a college that um met full demonstrated need and still does unfortunately it means that they can't fund absolutely everyone but they still fund most students um, and I felt so like blessed in retrospect. I didn't realize that that wasn't the case, you know, for most students. Um, and certainly I could not have attended college without my need being met. It just, or, right. or, you know, not the college I wanted to go to anyway. So let's go into it. Like, what does it mean when institutions say they meet 100% of demonstrated or full need? I think the biggest thing uh, for families is to really understand what is demonstrated need. It's probably not the cost that your parents or me or you feel that we can pay for our kids. A demonstrated need is going to be the college's total cost of attendance. They're going to subtract off what's called your expected family contribution to college. And then whatever number will be left will be the demonstrated need which really brings probably a lot of our listeners who may be newer to what is this expected family contribution or often referred to as an EFC. Um, mm -hmm. Where does this number come from? Uh, all colleges require a form called the Free Application for Federal Student Aid or a FAFSA form. Um, and what this looks at is going to be uh, parent and student income, your assets, uh, it's and in looking at these things, they're going to come up with a calculated federal EFC. At these specific colleges, a lot of these that are meeting 100% of demonstrated need, they also require an additional form that's called the CSS profile. And this form digs a little deeper into a family's financial situation where FAFSA is really only looking at um, income and assets, the CSS profile that is managed um, by the college board could possibly look at what equity you have in your home. Um, it could also look at car makes and models and years that a family drives so that these there's 200 around 200 or 200 plus schools that look at the CSS profile. So they um, are going to come up with your institutional EFC. So at these schools that meet 100% of need, I think that's the first piece to really understanding what is my demonstrated need for my family. And now we can kind of dig a little deeper in looking at now that we know what my expected family contribution is, what types of financial aid are they going to offer to us? We get this call often from families. Um, there are federal grants, state grants, institutional grants. There are also federal work study program and federal subsidized loans through the government are all these are considered need based financial aid. So they are going to be um, a need based factor um, when families meet that 100 percent of what your demonstrated need is. I always like to point out the work study and the subsidized loan piece because a lot of people think, oh, they're beating 100 percent of my need. And why are they offering my student this loan? I don't want my student to have this loan. Well, that is a need based loan. So that's why it kind of falls into that um, category. I do want to point out in May, I'm sure Sally saw this. I don't know if we've talked about this on previous podcasts, but Williams College in Massachusetts did announce this is a college that also is selective and meets full need. 
Um, they announced they're the first to eliminate loans and work from their financial aid packages. So they um, will um, offer only institutional um, grants, state and federal. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. That is exciting. I mean, the more colleges that do that, the better, right? Although, right. Yeah, I so will we'll say, yeah, we'll see. I mean, most... I mean, you mentioned 200 colleges um, and there's around 4,000 colleges in the country. So it's a pretty small percentage that meet demonstrated need even with even taking into account the loan. Right. Yeah, I think that 70, there are 200 were the ones that use CSS profile. There's 78, mm. I think, that meet 100% of need. So okay. 78 is a very small percentage. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That being said, I really think it's, a, I've, I've had people argue with you, uh, argue with me about whether colleges actually do provide financial aid and whether they ever provide enough. And I'm like, if you're a strong student, you are in a very lucky category. So um, I do think it's important to say, at least try, you know. All right, so. always try. You can always, fill, especially the first year, fill out the form and forms and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. All right. And so, I mean, I guess so clearly this isn't applicable to all students who apply for financial aid because so many institutions don't um, cover it. I mean, right, did you want to yeah. sort of add to that at all? Yeah, or? I guess. Um, so I guess to this question is a good one. But when you're looking at is the demonstrated if as long as you have demonstrated need and you're applying to one of these colleges that meet 100 percent, these are some of the more wealthy larger endowed institutions that do have um, the means to fund 100% of demonstrated need for all students. So as long as you fill out the forms, you meet the college um, financial aid and or, or admission application deadlines, then the funds are there to meet 100% of, of the demonstrated need. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. So how can a family, if uh, determine what their need is if they might be competitive for one of these institutions? That's a great question. So there is a tool on every college's website and it's called a net price calculator. And what this does is it allows you to go into that college's, you log into the, or not, you don't have to log in, it's open to anybody. Um, you would just go to the college website, look for the net price calculator. It's going to ask for some information on your taxes which brings me to a um, good point of what tax year are they looking at. So um, for financial aid, we'll assume your student is starting college in the fall of 2023. They look at your prior, prior year tax information. So they'll go back two years. So if you have a student that is entering their senior year and they're going to start college in the fall of 2023, they will look at, you will be inputting your 2021 tax information into this net price calculator. Um, at these schools, the net price calculator is truly one of the best tools because if you want to know how your home equity is going to be calculated, um, other specific things they may be looking for, um, the net price calculators are a little better for this type of institution opposed to some of the expected family contribution calculators out there. Um, so I think that is a good thing. One note is though that the financial aid formulas will be changing in the 24-25 school year. So if our listeners have a student that is going to be going into college starting kind of that 24-25 year or beyond, Right now, the calculators are not 100% accurate for you because they have not been updated with the current or with that new formula. So keep your eyes open. Hopefully, you can still do a one that's out there now to get a general idea, but the formulas are changing some, and hopefully those will be up, up and running, hopefully by the first of the year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> it's a big thing to take on faith. So Right. Yeah, yeah we're waiting. Yeah. yeah, it's a waiting. You're waiting on the government and the college board and whoever else has to make all these things happen. So I think the government is in charge. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they have to go first. <laughs> right. So. Okay. All right. So how can a student find a list of colleges that meet full need? 
Um, the colleges that meet full need do love to tout that on their website, so that is a good location. If you were kind of trying to just look to see a comprehensive list, we do put together a yearly blog on this, and you can find it in our blog post at blog or blog.getintocollege.com. The blog around this topic is called Colleges That Offer the Most financial aid. So if you just search that, you would be able to find the list of these 78 schools. Um, the last was updated in 21, so we will be doing a new, um, probably a newer update of if any are added or deducted in the upcoming year. Um, I think the list doesn't change too much. Um, one thing I think to keep in mind when you're looking at this list is these schools tend to be very rich schools, usually very selective. Um, mm -hmm. They're the ones who can afford to do this, and they're not necessarily the same schools that will offer generous merit scholarships. In fact, it's often very much the opposite. But there, when you look at the list, there are some that do meet 100% of need and also offer some merit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, University of Chicago was one of those. Yeah, um, I think that Union College. Said yeah, it's incredibly hard to get a scholarship there. I used to be in charge of their full tuition scholarship, and it was really tough to get it. So, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. And so what about schools that don't meet 100 percent of need across the board? Yeah, that is a great question, especially as students are starting to kind of put together their list um, and looking at colleges. Um, just because a school doesn't meet 100 percent of need across the board, this doesn't mean that they're not going to meet uh, full need for your family or your student. A college, say they meet 70% of need on average, uh, but if you meet their institutional goals, they may meet your full need in order to help recruit you. I think um, applying to colleges where you stand out is still a very much a top strategy to maximizing both merit and need-based aid um, mm -hmm. and kind of coming up with a list that kind of covers some safety schools to kind of help you kind of maximize financial and not being kind of too have your list too heavy on those more challenging institutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a student uh, when I worked at Whittier, we didn't meet 100% of need. And um, I worked with a student who was both high need and very, very talented, very competitive. Uh -huh. And <clears throat> his family ended up having to pay like a hundred and fifty dollars a semester and oh, wow offered, that's amazing i was it was truly amazing and i was like i have never seen a financial aid package this good and we even told them they could take that out in loans and they were like we can do that like that right? we yeah i know i've seen we some similar packages yeah like that this year for some colleges too so it's good so yeah the combination of need and merit if financial is what you're looking for is great um Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Exactly. All right. So last question. What are some final comments and suggestions that you may have as students research colleges that meet 100 percent of need? Oh, gosh, so many questions. Um, uh, so many comments, I should say. The one that stands out, I think, most is, though, we had a team meeting last week and we had a panel uh, there. And one of our panelists is a financial aid director at a college that meets 100 percent of need. So I'd like to kind of share from the front lines, what he's telling us, um, mm -hmm. and he's telling us to tell families that we talk to, one is do your homework, do the net price calculators. Mm -hmm. If cost is a factor, talk to the schools before you're applying. I think the big thing is to make sure you understand really what you're up against. If you're considering applying the ever popular, it seems these days, early decision, ED might help your chance of acceptance to a more selective institution, but it won't necessarily help the financial outcome. So before you apply to too many of these types of schools, I think the big thing is make sure that they fit both your academic and financial fit for your family. So the big thing I think is do your homework, ask the questions, don't feel afraid to ask schools kind of to see um, where you kind of fit financially as well when you're looking at the application process. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer. I really oh, appreciate it. Oh, thank you, it. Sally. It was great being here with you today and hope you have a great day. Oh, absolutely. All right. We're going to be taking a break now. And when we come back, we'll be talking to uh, a few people from Boston College about summer campus visits. Mm -hmm. 